Hey guys, today I'm going to show you some rock temples, ancient rock temples in Mahabalipuram. You have never ever seen them before. Even if you visited Mahabalipuram before, nobody has shown them to you. They are never seen by tourists. Uh, the tour guides, they don't even know these exist. Even on YouTube, all travel channels want to show you only large, beautiful monuments like this. Uh, I'm also guilty of doing this, but today it's going to be different, okay? You see those rocks on the beach. We're going to go and see if that could be an ancient temple. This was not shot today, guys. It was shot many months ago uh, before the lockdown. So you see, nobody visits these places at all. You do not read about them even in archaeological papers. Why? Because they're just considered as rocks, not carvings. But they're hiding a big secret, okay? Look at this one. This is very close to the water. Is this natural or is it carved? Do you see any tool marks? How about now from a different angle? Do you see anything strange? Do you see any type of carving at all? What is this? It's just weird. Is that a hand or something? Is it a buffalo's head? The water has smoothened all the carvings, making it look very strange. This is the giant buffalo-headed demon called Mahishasura with his right hand near his mouth and his left hand raised a little above his head. Now you realize this is not just a natural rock and these are artificial carvings. The buffalo is shown with his tongue sticking out. You can even see his bracelet if you observe carefully. There is a square chamber at the center of this rock. Inside, Quite possibly a female deity called Mahishasura Mardini, meaning the goddess who killed the buffalo-like demon. The square chamber is flanked by two lions guarding the doorway. Lions are always carved next to this deity. And inside the square chamber, you can see traces of turmeric and bright red vermilion. This means that there are some locals who still come here and worship this deity on a regular basis. They do rituals with the turmeric and vermilion and pray to this deity. This is very, very interesting because half the time of the year, this temple is inaccessible because of the ocean waters. I know today you think I'm exaggerating this because the temple is easy to access and the water is a little bit far away. But I have visited this place many times and half the time the ocean comes in and it's very difficult to access this temple. So I'm lucky that I was able to film this. And it's only because nature allowed me to film this. And in this situation, you know, the lockdown situation because of COVID-19 pandemic, we perfectly understand how powerful nature is. In fact, I want to show you two more temples like this, which are only a few hundred feet away from here. Where are they? Yes, those two rocks in the water. Locals say that yes, those two rocks in the water are also temples, just like the one we saw. Except water never recedes, it does not go back to that point. I hope someday I get to show you those two temples as well. I want to see it and I'm sure that you would also want to see these ancient temples. But for the time being, it's just taken over by nature. This is the real power of nature. I mean, think about it. Even if archaeology department wants to protect these temples, what can they do? And they try to save the bigger monuments. The short temple was originally taken over by tides all the time. 
and they had to put an enormous amount of rocks around the temple to save the shore temple from the ocean. So we know there are sunken temples in Mahabalipuram, but sadly, we cannot protect them. Now, what is the purpose of this nice little temple? When I ask a question like this, you may just be puzzled. What is the purpose of any temple, right? Or a church or a mosque, what is the purpose of that? They were all just created so people could worship and pray to these gods, right? Not this one. This was built for a different purpose. I know I told you the name of the goddess inside, and I even pointed out uh, that locals worship her. But see, this is hiding a nice little secret. Nobody knows about it. I also did not understand this until I explored the beach more. Mahabalipuram is full of mysteries, but many of them go unseen, even though they are right in front of you. See those rocks on the beach? What are they doing in the middle of the beach there? More ancient temples, these are the temples that reveal the actual purpose of these structures. Let's go closer and see what we can find. Remember we saw a buffalo in the previous monument? Here we can see more animals. An elephant carved at the bottom, you can see its trunk and the tusks. There's a circle carved on top and there's a square chamber cut inside the circle. How old are these carvings? They're about 1,300 years old. These are very ancient and I'm, I'm giving you the mainstream archeological account. This number is 1,300 years old and these carvings could even be much, much older than that. Near the elephant, you can also see a horse, a galloping or running horse. There's something carved inside that chamber, but this figure is beyond recognition. Standard archeology span may explain that inside there was a carving of Lord Indra because the elephant is considered the Mount of Indra, but it could also be other deities like Gajalakshmi as well. And then there is a human or humanoid figure carved as well. Look at its legs. This is possibly a dancing posture. 1,300 years ago, this would have been a brilliant carving, but the water keeps coming in and then there's the salty sea breeze. They both destroy everything. Let's look at the other side of the shrine. Initially, you tend to think these are natural ridges, just lumps caused by erosion and water. No, all these are carvings. If you look closely, there are multiple figures carved all over the rock. It must have meant something. We see a square chamber with a deity carved inside and on the top there is a lion-like figure. Inside you can see a deity holding a weapon or a tool. The lion signifies goddess uh, Mahishasura Mardini or Durga. So possibly inside this chamber, this deity was carved, okay? And uh, this is strange. A freestanding rock has been turned into a lion, a giant face and a long body. Of course, everything is beaten by weather. Nearby, another very outlandish monument. It's shaped into a very weird thing. What are these things? Can you recognize what these are? These are strange animal heads carved on the top and the sides, and in the middle there's a square chamber. How am I able to immediately recognize that these are all animal heads carved around the chamber? Because I have seen a large temple called Tiger Caves. I've also shown you this temple in a previous video. That Tiger Caves is just half a mile away from this small scale model. You see the similarity? Yes, there should be no doubt that this little rock was a small scale model and Tiger Caves was the finished temple. 
Again, look, the horse, the elephant, sculpted in small scale here, but carved much bigger in the finished large scale temple. Now look at the similarity. I'm just showing you the small scale models and the bigger temples. All of them are in Mahabalipuram. I've shown you many times that ancient Indian builders worked methodically. They created small scale models before carving giant megalithic structures. This is exactly why we see these small temples all over the beach. They're all models. I've just shown you a few, but this is Mahabalipuram, one of the greatest ancient cities in India. You will find incredible structures everywhere. I hope you like this video. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and also click on the bell button to get all the updates. Please give this video a thumbs up and do share it with your friends. I will talk to you soon. Bye.